If you were to talk to someone about horses with problems and needing help, the person that would keep presenting itself and the name that would keep coming up would be John O'Leary. John O'Leary is a trainer from South Australia and in his career he has retrained or re-educated over 20,000 horses. Some people might consider John's methods and ways of doing things as controversial, but always for John the horse's welfare and safety is always foremost in his thoughts. He works with horses on a ground level and does a lot of training at that level and then moves on to under saddle. John is a dentist, a farrier and a workplace trainer. He's also studied law and together with that he helps some of his clients if need be and he's a specialist when called into court cases. John's wife Linda is an accredited coach and John considers her to be South Australia's top young horse educator. Today we are very lucky to be able to interview John O'Leary here at Tottenbuck and share some of his skills and knowledge for a truly gifted and talented horseman. Hi John. How are you going? I'm very good, thank you. Would you like to share with our viewers why you decided to share your knowledge? Um, I decided to uh, attempt to share my knowledge on my website which I started 12 years ago and, and the first blog in the horse industry. Um, I probably invented the word blog I would say um, and 1.3 million people now read it around the world to, uh, to add to the knowledge base which was lacking through the pony club systems in Australia and from the British Horse Society uh, down through the pony club systems to the kids around the country where the subject of horsemanship was, was uh, lacking dearly. Has any horsemen inspired you John? Um, my, my knowledge base and all of my systems uh, have been taught to me by 25,000 uh, instructors and coaches and they have all been horses uh, because the horses never lie, they always tell the truth and they, and they never confuse and so um, I've not followed systems of other horses, I've developed my own systems because uh, of the problem horse side of, uh, of the field that I'm in. But the, the one horseman that, uh, that I have bounced off a, a little bit uh, was the, the late and great Jim Wilton. You have a great passion for doing the best thing for the horse. Um, your reason behind that? Um, horses, there are no problem horses in this world. Um, there are only owners lacking knowledge um, or humans that are confused. Uh, of the 25,000 horses that I've met, and, and many of them problem horses as I said, there are no problem horses. It's never the horse's fault, it's always our fault, and, um, and that's how I operate. And, 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 and so if, if you, you approach horses uh, with an open mind, never blaming them, um, and, and, and believing that it's us that's caused the problem, then the horse will trust you. And if you win the trust, the rest is easy. So your main message getting over to a horse owner would be? Listen to your horse, learn to listen to your horse. Horses are communicating to you the entire time. In fact, they are, they are reading our mind the entire time. Horses are extremely intelligent animals and sometimes I think smarter than humans because I can teach a horse the seven games of Pat Burley say in 30 minutes and it takes six months to teach, teach a human. So listen to your horse. The horse is communicating the whole time. Um, the horse tells you everything and because a horse never lies you always get the right answer and then you know how to, how to treat the horse. So do you think horses are easier to train than humans? Horses are far easier, easier to train than humans. Um, horses all horses want to do the right thing. Every horse on the planet only wants to cooperate with us humans and to help us. They will do anything for us. They always forgive us, even if they're a buck jumper. In the end, they will forgive us if we treat them right. So it's about respect and empathy and letting horses know that we truly love them and truly care. So would you say most of the problems are man-made or would you say some could be generic? Uh, 999 horses out of a thousand, the problems are man-made. I, I would only meet one horse in a thousand that is a genetic problem. So how much of your work percentage-wise would be done on the ground as opposed to on top of the horse? Um, probably uh, the majority would be on the ground because what you get on the ground you inherit under saddle and, and the foundation stones of of horses is, is what's so important and every trainer on the planet will tell you that. 
and, and what is lacking in all of these problem horses that we have here at this clinic, 32 problem horses at this clinic over two days, from buck jumpers to bolters to rearers to kickers to, to psychologically destroyed horses, what's lacking has been the foundation stones and the foundation stones comes from the ground. So what's the most satisfying thing for you working with these horses? The, the most satisfying thing, and, and I, I almost had a tear in my eye today, and I will, I, I may do at the end of today, because a, a little grey horse came into, um, into my round yard yesterday, who, was, who is a rescue horse from a rescue organisation, and he is totally and utterly destroyed psychologically with fear of everything. You couldn't do a thing with him, you couldn't approach him. You, 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 he would just run, he's, he's buck people off the try to get on him, he does the scoot, he, he's just full of fear. Well, I have won that little horse. He now is in love with me, I'm in love with him. And as a result of that, and because of his trust in me now, he's acting like just a normal horse today and I've used him for demonstrations on a couple of other things for my video cameras, for a DVD that I'm doing. And uh, this afternoon I'm gonna actually ride him under saddle and get on him. Previously, they had tried to get on him with sidelines on him and long reins, people with long reins holding him, and they couldn't, he would just scoot. So trust, it's all about trust. So you say that you've got the best starting system in Australia, why is that so? It's not that I've got the best, best starting system. The comment I made to you earlier was that, that I have the best mouthing system. It is, the, the mouth is the, is the foundation that protects the horse and the owner through the early stages and the green horse stages and the dangerous stages of a horse's life. If you have people falling off horses or horses bucking or learning to bolt, then their career is finished. So the mouthing system is, and the air brakes is what's important and, and if the top mouth was on horses, all horses, there would not be buck jumping horses and there would not be bolting horses because they simply could not and therefore there would, there would be less injured people on the planet and less horses going to the doggers yard. Yes and I've watched it here, he's done an amazing job. So John O'Leary, thank you very much for Top Horse and thank you very much for watching. My pleasure.